Okay, uh, this is another concept. Uh, remember at the beginning I said, in some cases, it is useful to explain things by using the LM curve that is positive slope. Okay, even though in reality, most likely the LM curve is horizontal because in reality many central banks use interest rate policy rather than money supply policy. Okay, but in this particular case, let's use the LM curve, a positive slope here. So this is your LM and IS curve. So this is the case where monetary policy cannot stimulate output. Why? Because it's fixed exchange rate. So this is under the fixed exchange rate. And that's why exchange rate cannot go down from I0 to I1. So that means you cannot increase the output from Y0, Y1. Okay? If you, if you look at this arrow here, so even though you try very hard, okay, but it has to go back here. Why? Because you adopt the fixed exchange rate. Now, here is the case where there is adverse shock, okay? And that tends to lower the activity, okay? So let's imagine this IS curve originally, and then there is a real shock, adverse real shock. That means IS curve shift to the left. So if IS shift to the left, according to the ISLN, the output will go down from Y0 to Y1. That's what you learned two weeks ago, right? But now, in the open economy, there's another line introduced, which is balance of payment line. And this is the balance of payment line. So, put it this way. Suppose you are a closed economy, then if there is an upward shock, RS shift to the left, what happens in the closed economy is that your output goes down to Y1. But if you are open economy with this balance of payment uh, line, your output actually goes down further instead of y, Y0 to Y1, you go to Y2. So the equilibrium in an open economy is number two here. The equilibrium in a closed economy is number one. Now, that's the case of fixed exchange rate. Now, this is the case of floating exchange rate. Okay. So, under the floating exchange rate, then Bank Indonesia or monetary policy can be effective in stimulating output. So, in a way, you can say this is the advantage of floating exchange rate. Because remember, in the fixed exchange rate, you cannot do that. You cannot, you cannot lower the interest rate. In this case, you can lower the interest rate. So, that means your output can go up here. What happens if there's a real shock under the floating exchange rate? Under the real shock, output will go down, but interest rate may also go down. Okay? And that leads to depreciation. And hopefully the depreciation will lead to higher export, and higher export also lead to higher output. So the output is first going down, this arrow here, first going down, but then going up again because of the floating exchange rate. So at the end, you may wonder if that is the case, there's advantages and there are disadvantages of both fixed exchange rate and floating exchange rate. Then what is the best regime to pick? What is the best for countries like Indonesia, okay, um, at least according to uh, macroeconomics theory. What is that? And the answer is no, modern macroeconomic theory cannot help you to pick which exchange rate regime is the best. Because you see both fixed or floating exchange rate has advantages and has disadvantages. So the most important thing is that policymaker must understand what are the advantages and disadvantages of each of the regime and based on their own circumstances because the monetary authority knows the best about the, the circumstances of the country then they can pick this one okay. but 
You cannot pick a particular region by relying on what does the macroeconomic workhorse model tell you. No, you cannot. Because essentially, the macro uh, microeconomic workhorse model does not tell you which exit system is the best. Okay. 